This is the fifth Vox Versity. We're going to do something a little different here. I was inspired by the videos over at Khan Academy. It's, uh, it's a really interesting perspective on, on introducing people to new topics that they want to learn more about. And so I was going through the uh, economics videos and I was a little bit surprised because uh, I ran into uh, the definition of inflation and that was what gave me the idea of producing this video because I felt that the definition of inflation that was being provided simply wasn't accurate. Uh, the way that Salman Khan uh, described inflation is as a general increase in the price of goods and services. They actually measure it, they take a basket of goods and services, and they see how those prices compare to a reference year. What Khan is talking about there is the consumer price index and it's a basket of about 200 goods. They have families keep uh, diaries and over the course of a year they, they have about 14,000 weekly diaries that they go through. Um, it's not inflation though. It is, it is one measure to give some indication of how much inflation is taking place. A different uh, definition of inflation is provided by Paul Samuelson in his textbook Economics and uh, he describes it by saying by inflation we mean a period of generally rising prices by deflation we mean a period in which most prices are falling the root cause of inflation and deflation is a change in total money spending relative to the flow of goods offered for sale so you can see where where Khan got his idea from in fact Samuelson's the guy who provided us provided mainstream economics with most of its applied Keynesianism. Uh, Keynesianism. However, uh, Samuelson's definition is also incorrect um, and uh, Milton Friedman has provided us with, uh, with the alternative. He talks about how inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon in the sense that it is and can be produced only by a more rapid increase in the quantity of money than an output. He said that in the counter-revolution in monetary theory. He also added that he would define the stock of money as including currency outside commercial banks plus all deposits of commercial banks. Now that's closer to what inflation actually is, but it's not quite correct. What inflation actually is, is an increase in the sum of the money supply and outstanding debt. Now I'm not going to get into that in this video. The, the purpose here is only to talk about how inflation A is not the consumer price index and B the consumer price index is a flawed measure of inflation. And the easiest way to understand that is perhaps to look at an analogy. Uh, in the same way that the map is not the territory, uh, the touchdown is not the six points, or vice versa, the six points is not the touchdown and uh, CPI is not inflation. You know, if you talk to most people, if you ask them what's a touchdown, they'll tell you seven points. Well, first of all, it's not true. You only get six for the touchdown. Secondly, the six points is simply the, the award, uh, the, the measure of the value of what the touchdown actually is, which is the act of carrying a ball across a goal line in open play. And it's an important distinction to understand because, you know, if you think that the, the effect, if you think that the consequence is the action, you're not going to understand uh, the action itself. You're not going to understand anything that is involved to the action itself. And so getting back to the, the basket of goods concept of the CPI, what we have here is 12 prices. This is not um, the, the CPI prices themselves. Remember, there's about 200 in that. But these are 12 specific prices that the economists at the Bureau of Labor Statistics came up with in order to uh, attempt to contradict um, a, an important critic of theirs. Uh, there's a gentleman by the name of John Williams of Shadow Stats who has come up with a couple alternative measures that he believes are more accurate than CPI and he criticizes them for some, some uh, statistical shenanigans in which they engage when they're producing the, uh, the metric. Um, 
he provides an alternative measure called the SGS90. Now, what we'll see here is that th these are the prices of various goods ranging from white bread to fuel, fuel oil, gasoline, tomatoes, steak, uh, even single family homes. And these were the prices in 1998. Uh, keep in mind, again, all 12 selected by the BLS. The two lines here, the red is the 32% increase in the prices of these 12 goods uh, by the CPI over the course of 10 years. So between 1998 and 2008, the CPI uh, metric increased 32 percent and the red line is a 32 percent increase in each of these prices. The yellow line is the SGS 90 statistic that increased 77 percent over the 10 years between 98 and 2008 and uh, you can see it's just a fudge factor uh, you know so it, it uh, it's not independently calculated he just adds a, an additional uh, uh, component to the to the results of the CPI but the question is which is more accurate well the blue line shows the actual prices the light blue line shows the actual prices in 2008 and it's kind of remarkable especially when you consider when you consider that this was cited uh, this is from a paper produced by the BLS in, in defense of the CPI but you can see here that uh, in, in a few cases, the, the prices were pretty close. In the case of, uh, it was the milk and white bread, the prices were pretty close. In the case of uh, the tomatoes and beefsteak, the CPI actually overestimated the, the increase in prices. But over here, there was a massive error in a few important little products like gasoline, fuel oil, and natural gas. And so, what this indicates is that, you know, in addition to not being inflation, the CPI is not actually a good measure of the increase in prices. And here we have each of those 12 prices. They're the, the first 12 blue rectangles. The red line going across the, the bottom here is the 32% inflation that was, or 32% increase in prices that was reported by the CPI. You can see even I fall into the language at times, but uh, you know it's it's not even close. The you know the 320 percent increase in the price of um, I believe it was fuel oil is 10 times greater than the uh, amount reported by the the CPI. And interestingly enough, <laughs> given that this was supposed to disprove the accuracy of the SGS 90. It actually showed here in the yellow, you can see that the 77% uh, reported by the SGS 90 was quite close to the 81.7% uh, increase in prices that we saw, that was actually uh, actually witnessed in each of these uh, on average of these this small basket of 12 goods. So, you know, what's the effect of this? What 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 does this mean? Well, what it means is that over time since 1913 when the CPI was first introduced there uh, it started at 9.8 uh, that was the price of the total basket and it has now risen all the way up to 218.7 but that's not actually an accurate measure as we know and so the blue line here shows what the value of the CPI would be if it were to uh, have increased at the same rate that we saw the actual prices increase from 1998 to 2008. And uh, taking that into account, uh, the CPI would actually be at 276.2 right now, which is 6% higher than, uh, than it's presently re reported. And that means that each year there's been about uh, an additional a 0.6% increase in prices that the CPI has not been accounting for. That may not sound like much, but again, over time, it adds up. And what it means is that the value of a dollar has fallen from 100 cents in 1913 to about 3.5 cents now. 
you know, the Fed, the Federal Reserve clearly has not been doing a very good job of maintaining price stability. And in addition to that, you know, that's just talking about the CPI. There are multiple other indexes produced by the BLS. They include the producer price index, it includes the employment cost index, the international price program for imports and exports, the GDP deflator, uh, you know, CPIU is actually what we usually mean when we say CPI, but there's also the CCPIU, which is chain CPIU, it's meant to correct for some of the known errors, and then there's also the CPIW, which is uh, a variant for urban wage earners and clerical workers. So, in summary, what this means is that inflation, you know, is not only not the CPI, it cannot possibly be the CPI. Um, it's, it's not a basket of goods. It's not simply the increase in prices. Those are just effects. They're just consequences of the actual cause, which is a increase in the money supply and outstanding debt. But I'm going to get into that next time. And so if you're interested, I'd encourage you to tune in. And in the meantime, uh, if you want to learn more about it, I have a book out uh, called The Return of the Great Depression. It's about a lot more than just inflation, but um, there is a chapter devoted to it.